In this video, I will show you the workflow with Zira in Premiere Pro. For those who are new to this channel, I am Sandro and I make videos about camera gear, mostly Zcam gear. And this video is not sponsored and I'm very excited about this Zero topic. About a year ago, I pre-ordered my Zcam E2F6 and when it arrived, I tried out the Zero, but I couldn't open it in Premiere Pro or any other editing software. You needed to convert the Zero to ProRes. But after a couple of months, there was a plugin for Premiere Pro on Windows. But not for Mac, so I waited until a few weeks ago Zcam published a plugin for Premiere Pro on Mac. And in this review I will show you the workflow and some basic color correction with Zero in Premiere Pro. I will not go too deep analyzing the Zero itself. It's more like if you're gonna have a shoot tomorrow and you're shooting Zero and you have a very close deadline, what do you have to expect in post? But to have the best vibe and concentration for editing, I need night. Magic! Welcome to my editing suite. Living room. Okay, let's take a closer look at the Zero workflow. Whatever. Okay, first things first. We start at Zcam's homepage. So um, just go to zcam.com and you will find your plugins on support, LUT. Here you have Zero plugin. You can download for Windows or Mac. And, which is pretty cool, the Zcam color correction plugin. Let's start with the Zero plugin, but, but, but let's start with the Zero plugin for Premiere on Mac. Download this and then open Premiere. Take your Zero file and drag and drop it into your project. Usually you get an error because you can't import this file, but with this plugin it is possible. So. Take this one and drag and drop it into your timeline. And now we have a 6K Z RAW 12-bit file in Premiere. And let's have a look how the playback is. Very nice. By the way, this is a good friend of me and stand-up comedian slash YouTuber, Phil Lauder. Pretty cool content. We did, uh, I, we shoot together since three years. Definitely check out his channel. It's linked in the description. And yeah, you are able to go to effects and have the master effects. And here is the important stuff, the interesting stuff. Press load from zero. And now you're able to change the ISO in post. So if it's too bright, just go to 400 and it's dark. Or it's too dark, just go up to, oh yeah, very bright. But yeah, let's have a look at the other settings. There's temperature. You can change the white balance in post, which is pretty accurate. Like you can make it, oh, that one zero was missing. You can make it very warm or like daylight, over daylight, very cold in post. Pretty cool. Okay, maybe these RGB lights are not so common. I'll show you a clip I made for the anamorphic review. And uh, by the way, you can check this out if you want. And this is gonna be the footage. So I shot this during daylight. So here we have a very high contrast situation and I can pull down the highlights like almost and maybe some mid-tones. So from this to this, it's pretty good. Like getting some more of these leaves. And now we can look if we can track some skin tones. So I use this one here and I, uh, now there's a funny thing or not so funny thing, but uh, more like a problem. 
Um, if you can't use the pipette, I don't know the word in English. What is pipette? Pipette? Pipette de couleur. Uh, that was French. <laughs> I don't know. This this thing here. You can't use it when you activated the Z-Lock color. There are two ways. You can just go above and then you're able to track it or just simply deactivate it. Then we have the skin tones. To speed up a little bit the skin tone tracking, you can get from this shot this result. Let's talk about the pros and cons. First pro, the playback is super smooth. You don't have to wait like for, you know, from H265. You just press play and it's super smooth, even in 6K. The first con is the export time takes a lot of more time than H.265 or ProRes. I have a project here, it is about 3 minutes and shot all on 6K Z-RAW. And uh, to export this with LUTs, with everything, takes about one and a half hour, 3 minutes. So this could get a little bit trouble with time if you have to do some changes after you saw the final export. It takes time. Second pro, you're able to adjust ISO and white balance in post. Another con, because you're editing with proxies, so it's not the raw zero file, it's just taking the zero file in the end for the export. So the proxy file is not so clear. And this makes it very hard for grading. I have a project here where I just wanted to track the gold tone of the necklace. And it was super hard with the proxies because I just could count the pixels. And the final export was much more crisp. And another pro, you can get a lot of details uh, from the highlights. This is really cool for, for me, for my style. But um, it is not so super much better than from H265. H265, there's a lot of option with the 10-bit, but it's not like you have double the opportunity. It's like a little bit more, but that's good. There is one not so nice thing with Z-RAW. It is not supported in Tentacle Studio, so you can't use the advantage of timecode sync. It could work with the sync option in Premiere, but to be safe, better bring a slate on set. Take us. <laughs> Under the bottom line, Z RAW files are smaller than ProRes files, but bigger than H.265, but are much smoother in playback than H.265. And in my opinion, this is a huge next step for Zcam, establishing the Z RAW files with this plugin. And maybe in future it is possible to import and grade Z RAW files in DaVinci Resolve. That would be definitely another next step. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to go deeper into Zero, then download the sample in the description. And if you're down there, leave a thumbs up and subscribe this channel. And if you have any other questions, leave it in the comments. And I wish you a great time during editing through the nights and whatever you're gonna create, it's gonna be epic. See you in the next one. And I. Get some sleep now. Uh, auto save. Oh my god.